let me tell you about Point Blank. Following the success of Sepultura's crossover album, frontman Max Cavalera seemingly was struck with a multitude of creativity that would still radiate now in regards to the plethora of artists he'd want to work with. While this spun off into some bands that are still very prolific to this day, the first offshoot he decided to pull together with British musician Alex Newport of Fudge Tunnel had only one blip of the music world and I'm going to be discussing it today. The group's name was Nail Bomb, and they had electronic introductions thanks to Alex that melded with Max's brand of songwriting in a way that felt very fresh then and still kind of fresh now. It's a record that is wedged between his last two records with Sepultura, but featured a majority of the band on it. I'm talking about the 1994 classic, Point Blank. That's right. Reformatting can mean anything, baby. I more just wanted to sort of address this in its own video, because obviously doing a reformatted discography review in the new format for a one-off record doesn't make sense, but I figured I should talk about it in a new updated format, and I do classic breakdowns now, so... There you go. Uh, Point Blank is a record that I loved at the time as a kid. It was a record that I sort of heard and burst growing up because my mom likes this record. And it's one that I still get mileage out of to this day. Uh, Nail Bomb is a project that was formed uh, with Max Cavalera, who was big in Sepultura at the time and would go on to form a myriad, a multitude, a surplus of musical acts that would do one to two records at a time. And Alex Newport, who was of the band Fudge Tunnel at the time, I really don't know much about Alex Newport to be honest. I looked at his dis uh, I looked at his uh, profile on Wikipedia, and he's been in bands that I'm aware of, uh, but I'm not familiar with Fudge Tunnel. But Point Blank was a record that came out in 1994 between um, Chaos AD and Roots, and honestly, ha it's more than just those guys. Um, they were the sort of creative force behind it, but in the studio to record this record, they brought in Igor, uh, Max's brother, who was also in Sepultura. They brought in Andreas Kisser from Sepultura. This feels like a glorified Sepultura offshoot, by and large, as far as like a lot of the cooks in the kitchen. Um, but you also got Dino from Fear Factory also contributing to this, which is kind of a neat little nugget because the sonic palette of this project is not like the sounds of Sepultura, which is something that I really enjoy about it. I really like Sepultura, and I like the Max era, and I even like some of the post-Max era. I've praised some of the records that they've dropped um, once Max left, but I like this record because it has this much more industrial adjacent sound that feels very in line with where some trends in metal were going. You know, 94... Uh, was when Fear Factory was starting to get a buzz in this sort of industrial adjacent style that bands like Nine Inch Nails and Ministry kind of helped popularize was really starting to find its groove in the 90s and Nail Bomb feels like sort of another slice of that in a really good way. You know, uh, it the, the seemingly big point of this group was also just to shock. You know, the album cover is of a woman with a U.S. soldier's rifle pointed at her head their live album which came out after this right before they broke up proud to commit commercial suicide just had a bunch of dead bodies on the cover this group was clearly meant to just be edgy shit during the 90s when shit was very edgy but the music itself uh feels like again sort of an adjacent bridge from where sepultura was at the time you know a lot of the riff work and guitar production on tracks like religious cancer and world of shit and uh, Gorillaz uh, and Vaitoma no Ku. Really, a lot of the guitar production, by and large, and the riff styling feels adjacent to early 90s, last leg of the Cavalera era, Sepultura, which is nice. I like that era of the band, and I think it fits really well amidst the industrial-tinged backdrop or the industrial-adjacent backdrop that this album coats. You know, a lot of the sampling on tracks like 24-Hour Bullshit or Wasting Away, the, the synthetic production on Wasting Away, and for fuck's sake, the stuttering of the guitars on Religious Cancer also kind of fits that same mold of, like, what Fear Factory was conjuring up at the time. You know, it, it's not exactly the same thing as what, like, early Ministry and Nine Inch Nails were doing. It definitely feels like it's adjacent to that sort of offshoot of industrial metal that was going on. 
but uh, I like it here. You know, it's not. It, there's nothing here that gets quite to like God Flesh or Coil sounds of heavy. Uh, you know, they get close on tracks like Some of Your Achievements and The Closer's Sick Life, but they don't quite aim for that style. They more feel like they're definitely trying to just be adjacent and forge their own path that a lot of the scene was doing at the time. But I also really like how they, they take all those two sonic components and they inject a little punk edge in there. Tracks like Exploitation and Blind and Lost, their, their drum style feels more in line with like hardcore stuff in a great way, you know exploitations vocal stuff when it comes into that distortion and that almost growl feels like vintage punk in a great fucking way and i love how raw that shit feels and the lyrics on here as well feel like a melding of like punk anti-establishmentism and metal anti-establishmentism you know uh they have their anti-religious stuff like religious cancer they have pure nihilism in the form of for fuck's sake or blind and lost or wasting away you know they have their socio social driven stuff like 24-hour bullshit which seemingly is going against uh rallying against the onslaught of news that flooded the airwave that floods the airwaves they have these war imagery or just these darker laden uh lyrics on tracks like gorillas or vitoma no ku you know some of your achievements has this real staunch anger to it that feels like again it's sort of melding those two worlds together with a little bit of that sort of vocal style that was seen in the more industrial adjacent scene i don't know this record has a fusion of a handful of things all of which i really enjoy and all of which i think come together in a splendorous fashion i feel like max is in his element vocally he fits these different styles incredibly well and i like how it feels a little more dynamic than where sepultura might have been at the time or where Soulfly became you know i like uh i think him and alex have really good chemistry as far as a creative force goes and you know i understand that this uh band was seemingly wrought to just be edgy but i kind of wish a little more came out of this because i feel like Max's vocals also fit this industrial adjacent style incredibly well and I feel like the the soundscape they were working with here was a perfect storm of what worked in the early 90s for heavy stuff in a great way you know and it's funny this record fe seemingly feels like a, a focal point or a buzzword for people to, to conjure up when they want to get people hyped for a Cavalier project because Kill or Be Killed was pitched as nail bomb adjacent there was another project that max cavalera was doing with greg Cruciato of the dillinger escape plan that wasn't kill or be killed that was supposed to be very uh, nail bomb adjacent and nothing has ever really struck the same chord as this you know and it's a shame because i like the overall cocktail of sounds i think that while some of the lyrical uh stuff can get a little too broad like i think world of shit I love its sample in it. I love the hate is reality cycle that goes in there. I could see it being viewed as a bit monotonous or a bit too broad. And the same goes for like Blind and Lost. But I think the punkier elements of Blind and Lost lend it to, to working in that sort of sense. And again, the ambience on tracks like For Fuck's Sake are so good. I love the mechanical texturing and the synthetic tones on that track. While I think it goes on for maybe a bit too long... I love the closer stick life. I think that it's again this heavy ass, almost sludgy adjacent track that I think works incredibly well. And yeah, this record's a classic to me. I think that it's it, it works more than it doesn't. I think that you know while my nostalgia for parts of this record may uh, taint my opinion a bit, I do still think it holds up amid, amongst the multitude of side projects. Side projects, Max Cavalera keeps himself busy with and i think that it's absolutely worth your time i think there's a reason why it become it became a buzzword because it did hit such a such a raw resonant core lyrically and sonically that i don't think max has fully been able to recapture you know for as much as i think soulfly is fine same with kill or be killed there's just nothing that he's really done that's hit me uh outside of sepultura that it hits quite as hard as Nail Bomb. You know, I think that it's still a great record, and I think it's worth your time. And those are my thoughts on Point Blank. What do you think of this record? Have you listened to it? If you haven't, I highly uh, suggest you do so if you like heavy music. 
Um, but if you like this review, be sure to give it a like. If you want to see more of my music gaming and general nerdery content, be sure to subscribe. Special thanks to my patrons if you want to join the ranks to get early access to content, exclusive content, or to help drive the community. It's linked in the description. I'm going to get out of here, though. I've been Foul Rack. You guys have good insights and situations. And I'll see you another day. Thank <laughs> you.